What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on the new videos. Okay, vlogs, vid tutorials, all of that, alright? <laughs> they were going to be talking about apartment hunting and I'm just going to be sharing some tips, um, my experience, and then of course some things that you absolutely need to know before you start looking for one just to save yourself some trouble, okay? So, let's get started. So I'm going to start by moisturizing my skin and I'm just going to use this moisturizer. This is from Glow Recipe. It is their Banana Souffle Moisture Cream. That is what it looks like. I actually got this. Oh, y'all see how thick that is? Well, it's, it's whipped. Excuse me, it's whipped. I actually got this in my Ipsy Glam Plus bag. And it smells like... Laffy Taffy's. <laughs> what we're talking about today is apartment hunting, y'all. And I know that some of y'all may be confused because it might be like, okay, who is trying to move during the pandemic? Let me tell y'all something. I would not have my apartment right now if it was not for this pandemic. And that's just me being honest. Okay, I would not have had the money to do it. I, I wouldn't. Even though right now, you know, I have a pandemic job, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You need to know what you want. I feel like a lot of people get excited about apartments and they forget the reality of it all. And the reality is, is you really not going to get every single last thing that you want. But it is important to just go ahead and write it down so that you have at least a visual of what you're looking for. Do you want a one bedroom, a two bedroom? Do you want a big living room? What kind of amenities are you looking for? And if you don't know what amenities are, amenities are things that are available to you because of where you live. So for example, a parking garage, you know, a fitness center, AKA a gym, pool, things like that. You need to know what you want in an apartment because it's gonna help you narrow down where you want to live and knowing what you want is going to help you understand why things cost as much as they do the more amenities that an apartment has the more it's likely to cost to live there especially if some of the amenities are things like surrounding businesses convenience is also an amenity know what you want and write it down so that whenever you're looking you don't get distracted by what they say they have made available the second thing is to be realistic financially. So once you write down everything that you want, you need to look up how much those things usually cost. And you can go to websites like apartments.com or you can get a broker that will help you find an apartment. And brokers usually get commission off of when you get an apartment. So don't go looking for one unless you have the money and all that other stuff, okay? So you need to look up how much the things that you want cost. And then be realistic with yourself. What are you willing to sacrifice based off of your income? Now, if you can absolutely afford everything that you want, good for you, sis. Most people can't do that, especially for a first apartment. A lot of the time, it costs way more than we think. I can tell you just based off of where I live, rent is definitely way more than um, it should be, especially for what some of these places are offering like <laughs> okay it's 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 expensive you're gonna pay at least where i live i live in texas you're gonna pay at least twelve hundred dollars for a decent apartment at least and that does include studios too most studios are not cheap either part of being realistic financially is understanding when you're not ready to get an apartment. Just because you want one doesn't mean you can't afford one. Usually you'll wanna make two to three times your rent each month. And that's from all your sources of income. That way, if you get in a pickle, you'll be able to pay your rent, if anything else. That's something that's not spoken about very often when it comes to people getting their first apartment. If you don't have any help, you need to make two to three times your rent number one number two your credit is going to be checked anywhere they don't check your credit um 
you probably don't want to be living there because that means that you're going to be surrounded by individuals who may not have the best reputation for one reason or the other. This is so good. If Red don't make me this. If you cannot afford to get an apartment on your own because you can't, because you don't have the money or because you don't have the credit, you're going to have to have a co-signer. And that co-signer is going to be legally obligated and responsible for that apartment. Meaning, if you don't pay your bills, if you don't pay your rent, you know, it will affect that person's credit. And sometimes when people move out, you know, their parents, their guardians, whoever, will actually help them with that, which is nice. But if you're doing it on your own, just know that you're going to have to have that money up front. If you don't make two to three times your rent already, you're going to have to have that money up front. Uh, I'm over here talking and I forgot that I was looking for a brow pen. Avoid trying to live outside of your budget because you'll wind up having an apartment with no food <laughs> or you'll wind up losing your apartment just because you want this fancy luxury apartment doesn't mean you can not afford it sis and just because you have the money now doesn't mean you will later so when it comes to finding somewhere to live you want to live well within your means and well within your means means paying less for more of what you want you don't have good credit or you don't make enough money they will require you to pay a huge deposit and the deposit will be will be the same amount of your as your rent okay or can be the same amount as your rent and then um they'll require you to pay one month's rent up front also keep in mind that if you have any pets your pets you'll have a pet fee and then you'll have You'll have a pet fee for each pet and some places require pet rent, which means that's on top of your rent. Something else to consider is um, efficiencies. Efficiency apartments are usually cheaper. They're usually way more affordable, but they're also usually not in the best condition. I'm not going to say not in the best neighborhoods because there are efficiencies in some pretty decent suburbs and some pretty decent neighborhoods, but they're not in the best conditions. They're usually those apartments that you see that are kind of raggedy, you know, don't have no gate or do have a gate, but there's only one way in and one way out. <laughs> you know, and there's no shame. If you have to live in an area like that, I would just say be safe, be careful. So just be realistic with yourself financially and make sure that you are putting yourself in a position to uh, succeed as best as you can because you know everything ain't gonna go the way we want it to but you don't want to just be jumping the gun on any apartment okay the next thing that I wrote down is don't get roommates okay and I'm pretty sure y'all are like where is this coming from and I know y'all are like what's wrong with roommates what she mean don't get roommates what's the, what's the problem blah, 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 blah. okay I'm gonna just keep it short and sweet with y'all roommates are a risk and I say that because you could be living with your cousin, you could be living with your, your friend, you could be living with your co-workers, whoever. And regardless of who it is, those people don't care about you like you care about you. So if you're living with roommates, it puts you in financial risk for a couple of reasons. If they don't pay their bills and you don't have the money to pay them, you know, to, to help them out, then you guys are both stuck and that messes up your credit or the credit of whoever helped you get the apartment. Another thing too is people often have disagreements when they're living together. People get upset, you know, if your roommates decide they want to ditch you and leave you to pay, you know, the rest of your lease. You're stuck. There's nothing you can do about it, you know, and that's why I say roommates are a risk. I do not recommend having roommates. I, uh, when I first was on the verge of getting this studio, I had been asked by quite a few people, you know, are, ooh, are you gonna have roommates? Are you gonna? And I was like, no, no, I don't. I have never been the kind of person who enjoys sharing a room. I don't. I don't like sharing space with people that I don't have to share the space with. So. What you see is not what you get with apartments, okay? <laughs> 
if y'all look up apartments, you could even look up the worst apartment complex that you know. And you go online, okay? Those apartments will look amazing. They make the apartments look like they are top tier. They make it look like the president, you know, himself will be living in there. They make it look like Queen Elizabeth used to live in there. Like, they will make the apartments look lavish and luxe. But they'll have these prop apartments where they're real pretty, real neat, real clean. You know, every couple of years or so, they'll remodel them and make them look shiny and brand new. And they'll take pictures of those apartments. And then they'll take pictures of the uh, amenities. The pool, you know, the office area, the gathering space that you can use, things like that. But they'll take pictures of everywhere else but the actual apartments where people are living. They make it look pretty. They make it look brand new because, of course, they want to draw you in. They want you to come live there, you know, or apply and waste your money because they're not going to approve you. And so that's why I said what you see isn't what you get. Even some of the really nice places that look pretty on the outside are not that great on the inside. So it's really important. So it is very important, if you can, to tour these places. And I know we are in a pandemic. We're supposed to be staying six feet away from people. This, that, and the third. But if you are looking for a place to live, skipping out on seeing what it actually looks like is, is not a good idea. It's not wise. It's not smart. And it's not going to help you. Especially if that's not really a risk that you're willing to take. Which is winding up signing a contract for a place that you really don't want to be in once you get there and whenever you do go look at these apartments look at everything and i mean everything sis turn the water on okay flip the light switches on look at the the floorboards look at the floor you know check the doorknobs and other little things that might get to you if you move in and it's not up to par check all of that stuff because once you move in, that's it. You know, you can't really do anything about it, basically. Read the reviews and look for the things that the people were talking about. And then don't be afraid to ask the leasing agent from the leasing office those same questions that you're concerned about. And see how they answer you and see how they communicate and cooperate or not. If you get there and this stuff messed up, don't think that they're going to fix it just because you're you're there. That just because you moved in, that maintenance is going to care and going to want to come fix whatever the problem is. If it wasn't fixed before you got there, it's not going to be fixed after you moved in. Trust and believe. Um, the next thing that I really want to reiterate is communicating with the leasing agent. If you find that it's difficult getting in touch and it's difficult getting a response from them, um, don't take that lightly because if they're not willing to communicate with you while you're trying to move in and things like that, then you're not going to, that's the same kind of service you're going to get once you've moved in. When I was moving in, the people that, um, when I was moving in, the leasing agent that I worked with was really, really nice. She was very, very sweet, very helpful, and she communicated promptly. Fortunately, I got the manager, okay, so, you know, which I'm assuming doesn't normally happen if we weren't in a pandemic, but I got the manager, and she was very prompt, but if your leasing office, agent, people, person, if they don't communicate with you about certain things, if they're not, if they're not clear, or if they're not forward, or they don't have an actual answer for you, then just take heed, take note of that, because it, when you need, when you actually need help, you might not get it if you move in. So there's that. Accessibility, amenities, location, privacy, and security. So accessibility. What I mean by that is how easy is it for people to find the apartment complex? I don't know about where y'all live, but people are criminals, okay? How easy would it be for someone to get access to you or your, your vehicle you know, and things like that. Do they have garage parking? Do they have um, 
Do they offer garages for you to rent if you want to rent one? You know, is it easy for somebody to just walk up in there? Is your complex visible from the street? Is it flashy, you know? And of course, what kind of people already are you know, living there and things like that. These are things that you want to consider because that accessibility falls in line with security. How secure the place is and whether or not you're going to be able to walk around at night and things like that or leave your vehicle parked without having to worry about somebody breaking into it and things like that. Okay, so amenities. In my opinion, okay, in my opinion, living in an apartment complex should be like living in your dream home. There should be a gym, there should be a parking garage, there should be some form of security and consistent maintenance. All of those things are non-negotiables to me. And I know that there are people who, you know, maybe you don't swim and you could really live without a pool and things like that. But to me, my rent shouldn't cost more than a mortgage on a house if I can't even go swimming or use or, or have access to a gym and things like that. Those are my non-negotiables. So you need to know your non-negotiables before you move in. You have to weigh those things with how much the rent costs, the location, and things like that. It's <laughs> There's a lot to getting an apartment, to say the least. And all I can say is be ready, y'all. Yeah, be ready for frustration, be ready for tears, be ready for, you know, doubting yourself all of that because it is not easy next thing is location where your apartments are is also going to affect how much it costs to live there if you're living in the city you're going to pay more if you're living in the suburbs you're going to pay less if you are living in the outskirts of the suburbs usually what people call the ghetto and things like that you're going to pay much much less but what you're going to have access to is also going to vary so where as if you're living in the city you have things available to you like Trader Joe's and, you know, clubs and, and bougie restaurants that are right around the corner or right down the street or within walking distance is usually what the case is. Um, and then if you're living in the suburbs, you'll have to drive a little bit usually to go to the store or to go get something uh, specific, things like that. Another thing that is really important whenever you're looking for an apartment is considering security. I actually mean how secure the facility is. So how easy is it for somebody to walk up to your front door? Can they get in? If somebody is having problems with somebody else, are they able to just bombard their way through the complex? How easy is it for someone to have access to your mail or your information and things like that? Will your packages and stuff be delivered to your front door or is there a secure place for the mail to be taken? Things like that. That's what I mean when I say security. This is the kind of stuff you really don't think about until you've moved in. Because I've worked in an office that was secure before, you know, you get on the elevator, you have to have a key to get on the elevator to take you anywhere aside from the public, publicly accessible floors. Because of my experience with that, I was really, really keen on having somewhere to live where I could park my car safely, where I wouldn't have to walk too far from my car to get to my apartment, and then also where you can't get in without brute force and somebody, you know, knowing that you're coming in unless you have a key. So that was really important to me, and usually places like that will provide you with the access cards and things like that uh, free of charge the first time you get one. Yeah, so that's definitely something you wanna consider as well because otherwise, you know, your safety will be at risk. You know, and definitely ask questions. And I recommend when you're asking the leasing office questions to do so in person and via email so that you have evidence, written proof of what they're saying is or isn't going to be you know occurring when you're living there this is so hard staying focused and talking 
about all of this all at once. All I know is, is if you're looking for an apartment, just be thorough, you know, and don't be shy about asking questions to people that you trust. Um, you definitely don't want to put yourself in a situation where you have to rely on anybody else unnecessarily. And I know to some of y'all that might sound a little negative, but it's not. You know, if you want to live on your own, if you want to be independent, you have to be to a degree. You can't expect anyone to think about you or to put you first or even to help you. And that just reminds me, I didn't even talk about moving. You need to have at least two months rent up front. You also need to be prepared to pay the admin fee. And the admin fee is what you pay to apply for the apartments. That's right, y'all. Y'all have to pay. You have to pay to fill out the application, y'all. The money begins with the application. So you pay to fill out the application. That is the admin fee. So you pay the admin fee, all right? And that could be anywhere from free to i heard two hundred dollars which is ridiculous in my opinion you have a deposit okay and then you get to the moving aspect so when you're moving i definitely recommend minimizing your possessions if you can and i say that because moving is annoying y'all so let's just say that it costs ninety dollars ninety dollars for the admin fee okay then we have two months rent one of it is going to be the deposit and the other one is your first month's rent right so let's just say that that is your rent is a thousand dollars that's ninety dollars plus two thousand you have to sign up for an electricity bill okay so there's that let's just say that that's fifty dollars and that's your electricity then you have to get renter's insurance i didn't even think about this y'all renter's insurance and you can either pay renter's insurance monthly or you can pay one big sum at that time and you have to have that before you move in like so let's just say that that's another two hundred dollars okay moving so let's say you hired a mover right right now we are already at twenty three twenty three hundred forty dollars okay if you hire a mover that can be anywhere between two hundred to four hundred dollars so let's just say twenty seven hundred dollars and if you rent a truck yourself, that could be an extra $100. But you're moving that truck. You're moving all that stuff yourself, basically. So even just living in a studio, moving out can cost you two to $3,000. And that's just the kind of money that you have to have if you want to leave your family home. If you want to live on your own. So, yeah, you guys, that is pretty much all I got on moving. Like, <laughs> comment down below and share any tips or tricks that you have for finding a nice place to live. Because for me, I, I, my cousins and my aunt helped me. Praise Jaw. They helped me so much. I love them so much for helping me and not making things difficult. Um, but they helped me and we searched high and low. We even drove through probably like four different cities, you know, trying to find something for me. And when I opened myself up to living in a particular area of Dallas is when I finally found something that I was comfortable paying for. And now here we are. We... Reno and I are living in this studio. We are very comfortable. He loves it. Sometimes I feel like we could use more space, but it's not something that we need. And like I said, we're very comfortable with living as close-knit as we are. And it keeps us from accumulating stuff that we don't need. I think about that a lot. That is one thing I hated about moving. I don't like having to pick up and go. And taking so many things with me like comment down below and let me know what was it like the first time you moved out on your own was it fun was it easy what are some things that you learned i learned just how much i actually enjoy cooking <laughs> i used to cook when i lived in my family home but not nearly as much as i do now like at all 
I feel like that has to do with my comfort level because I know I'm living in my home. You know, it's different when you're in your family home because that home belongs to your guardians. You know, your mom, your dad, your stepmom, whoever. And I feel like a lot of growing up, a lot of parents really remind you all the time that it's not your house. So having my own space really encouraged me to just try new things, having my own refrigerator. <laughs> I also learned just how patient I am. I also learned how much I hate having uh, clothes. <laughs> I don't really shop per se, but I just don't like having a ton of clothes. It's just not what that is for me. I also learned or realized that Renault is a, a fashionista <laughs> or a fashion king. What do you call guys that like fashion? He is a fashion king, okay y'all? He likes to dress up and look super duper handsome. And I, I dress up a little bit too, but I don't be looking as cute as he be looking. He be looking cute. I be over here in my all black, minding my business. And he just be out here looking all kinds of fly. <laughs> Alright y'all, so this is the final look. You know, super easy to do. I hope that, um, oh, the lipstick that I put on is Burning Love from MAC. Super cute. This is in their, um, Powder Kiss liquid lip color. But yes, this is the look. Anyway, thank you for requesting this video, okay? I really appreciate y'all, you know, letting me know what you want to see, what you, letting me know what you want to see, what you want to hear me talking about. I appreciate you. Make sure I don't got a little stick on tea. I appreciate y'all. And um, like I said, comment down below and let us know. Like I said, comment down below and let us know what was it like the first time that you moved out? Are you looking to move out? Any tips and tricks that you guys have for finding an apartment and keeping one? Okay. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I was all over the place because that's just how my brain is right now. So... Please be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel because it is free. We are almost at 7,000 followers, 7,000 subscribers, and I'm super excited. This lipstick really be trying, be trying to play me. Like, it gets all over my lips. But anyway...